welcome to Home Keepers. I am so glad you're there. And I always like to say, if you're a brand new viewer, you are so welcome. And we believe in strengthening the, the home, the American home. I'm telling you, if, if that could get on track, it would make such a difference in our nation. So if you're brand new, please visit us next time and next time and next time and just become a part of us. We, we feel like we have a great big family, <coughs> pardon me, homekeepers out there. If you were watching the last program, my guest was Carolyn Goad Pankella, and uh, she gave quite a riveting testimony of uh, sorrow in her life, being born into a big Christian family, a family of ministry, and how those uh, knocks and blows, especially of losing both parents <coughs> at a very young age, uh, caused her to go down a wrong path, and so today we're going to hear the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, and um, I think that you're really going to get a lot out of it. I, ho I hope that you can stay tuned for the entire interview that we had with her, because her story sends out so many messages of the grace of God, and no matter what you're going through, I really think in many ways you can relate to Carolyn, so we'll show you part two of that. And then I'm going to join Wanda over in the kitchen. We're fixing a bean and rice and tomato and chicken deal. I don't even know for sure what you call it. We'll find out for sure. It looks so good. We haven't tasted it yet. But if you like to have a nice luncheon for girlfriends or whatever, you really want to know about this one. Before I join her, though, I want to again offer you the Busy People Super Simple 30-Minute Menus. And if you were here the day that Don Hall, if you were with us the day that Don Hall was on here, I was amazed at the meal that she prepared. This book has everything in it you need. And not only has the nutrient uh, information and the calories and so forth, it tells you what to buy and at what time to start each dish of the meal. And I'm telling you, it works. It's just like clockwork. She did one of them here. This was written up in my hometown newspaper, which is one uh, reputed to be one of the best in the nation, the St. Petersburg Times. Got a really good review. So... This would be a great gift for someone starting out or for someone who would like to simplify this part of your life. You need this 30 minute menu. So for that gift of uh, $28 plus the shipping and handling, we'll send it to you. The address is on the screen. If you use your credit card, call 1-800-229-0059 and we'll get it out to you. I really do believe it's the most amazing cookbook we've ever offered. Would you agree, Wanda? I would, absolutely. She just blew me away well, yeah. when she was here. And she could tell I was this real nervous ninny. I was watching <laughs> um, Linda, you know, with the time clock. Right. We actually finished ahead of time a little bit. Actually, I think it took about 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yep, she's right on. Every bit of information you need is in that book. And for all the busy moms out there and those who work, um, this is a real boon for you and blessing. I hope you'll order it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, do you want me to start mixing over here? Sure. Okay. So, um, but this is a, a this half is, a cup of the this is a, Caesar dressing. Yeah. Your Caesar that you just buy in a bottle, right? Right. And I just cut the top of this tomato off. Simply cut that off, and now I'm going to just take the seeds out of it. And then this, you said two, two teaspoons of uh, the Dijon mustard, right? Yep. Yep. That would be good. Now, you don't have to use this, but this tomato, but you know, if you want to have a, some special friends over one afternoon for a little brunch or a lunch of some sort, you could certainly do this, and it would be beautiful. Oh, I think it would be so pretty. <clears throat> and we were discussing before the program. All you would need is a really good hard roll. One of those Chicago yeah. rolls they call them. Hard. It would be good. Some good butter. That's it. Really, really iced good. tea. Iced tea. You got it. All right. It. Okay. Then you're just going to mix that together. And do you want me to get the rice, or do you want to get yeah. the rice? I'll yeah. Yeah, and rice. you. Uh, the rice is one of those you boil in the bag. Yeah. Simply the success rice. Mm -hmm. We use the brown rice. Um, it's a healthy meal. It's healthier. Mm -hmm. 
And in actuality, if you really even want to cut the calories anymore, just get like a Ken's, well, I shouldn't say the name brand, but... Oh, I'll say like, it, honey, say I it. I prefer... I prefer Ken's dressing. I always, every time we mention one of these big corporations, I keep thinking they'll send us some money, but yeah. they never you have. Can, yeah, that take that back. Uh, Kitchen Maid gave us a beautiful food process. Yes, they've been wonderful. Yeah. The rest wonderful of you, come on. Come on. And then all we're going to do, this is a can of uh, drained of the Mexican corn. We're just going to add all that in there. This is not work for that. And we're going to add canned chicken, drained. And I sort of kind of grate it just a little bit. I don't want it too chunky, but. I was telling Wanda what shocked me is I ate a piece of that chicken and it's delicious. I'm not much into canned anything, really. Right. I don't buy much canned thing, and, and certainly not much canned meat, but we got this and uh, boy, it was surprisingly tasty. And then this is mm -hmm. just a can of um, black beans. Black beans that's been rinsed and drained. It's got everything I wanted and that then, I love in it. Oh yeah, you would. And it's pretty too. And here's some green onions, which I think will make it. Now that's you said four, you could possibly heat four. this. You can. You can have it warm or you can have it cold. I think. I think I'd rather have it cold. I'd rather have it cold. Me. Mm -hmm. Me too. I, I'd agree with you. So what you're going to do, and I thought I had a spoon here, but actually I don't here. have one. All right. Will that do? That will do. And then what I'm going to do here is this is just some spinach leaves for fun. And you could actually do this for your special friends that are coming over. And oh, you can sort of plate that so a little pretty. bit. Yeah. Well, that was a limp one. We don't want them. Now, if you didn't heat this, spinach. you know what I might put in this for a little crunch? It's just some really chopped celery. You know, like you, can, you, like, you do like crunch. I like crunch. I guess crunch. the onions won't be enough for you. Mm -mm. But it would be for me. And um, let me see. I'm going to let her put it in because if I put it in, it's going to just flop over the side of the dish. But I am going to taste now, there's, it. Now, there's, I've not purposely added any extra seasonings. There's not mm, any salt. Mm, mm, mm. There's no Wanda. extra pepper in here. But, you know, you've got to figure that your, your, um, your dressing is going to have some of that flavor, plus your, your mustard is going to have some zing to here, it Here, take anyway. a little tiny taste. I wonder if it needs a little bit more salt. She's the pro. Of course, you can tell that. A um, little tiny taste. A little here. tiny bit of salt. What do you think? Mm. Well, isn't mm -hmm. it good? Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and probably the... Um, Salad dressing wasn't quite as salty as we might have expected, but... No, I, I just think, you know, you can plate it with a little bit of chai. How in the world some. could you get anything easier than that? And so gorgeous! And so, you know, it's, it's not really hard to do. This is a, this is a usable and that's what you recipe. Could serve with some friends. I would chill this, by the way. Uh -huh. I would add maybe uh, a little bit of salt and pepper. And you can get the, what they call no, the new salt or even the light salt just so you can lighten up the whole entire meal. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, flavor it to how you like it. Let me tell you, it tastes good if you love black beans and rice like I do. And this just got a few more things in it to give it that kick. So we'll send it to you. Mm. If you want this recipe, we'll send it to you. And you can tell how beautiful it is and you can envision how uh, usable it is. So the address is coming up on your screen. Just help us out a little bit with, you know, getting it to you, and we'll be glad to send it to you. And then I want you to enjoy part two with Carolyn Goad Pankella. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. There's a difference between waiting on the Lord and being in a holding pattern. Yeah. And I see a lot of singles. They're in this holding pattern. They're going nowhere while they're waiting for Prince Charming to come around. And if you've flown as much as I have, yeah. I'm sure you have. I hate holding patterns. Oh, yeah. Every time the pilot says we're going into a holding pattern, I said, oh, please, Lord, please, no. <laughs> you have no idea how long you'll be there. And, and I've even heard it said that it's a little bit dangerous to be in that holding. But when you wait on the Lord, 
which apparently you were forced to do because you married at the ripe age of? 31 or 32. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I always add to this, and I have a CD out about this on my testimony of this. Um, waiting is an action word. Yes. It's not a noun. Mm -hmm. And my question that I ask these ladies all the time is, the question is, what are you doing in your waiting season? Mm -hmm. Are you out? Me, I was trying to take thing, matters in my own hands, fill my own self up, you know, get my needs met, play in house, it, totally missing out on the whole thing. Instead of when I finally, God cut it for me and I got sold back out to Christ, my waiting changed to I was serving God. See, I used Ruth in the Bible as yes. my, she was my hero. Yes, Because she Good was one. serving God. And when she was out in the field working, serving God, he brought her. The Bible says that a man findeth a good thing. Mm -hmm. and, and she so, found a rich husband. Honey, she did. But you know, I made a list of 80 things I was looking for in a mate. And everybody told 80. me. 80. 80 things. And everyone told me, you That's will ambitious. never find that. Do you know what? I trusted a big God that, Lord, okay, here's your word. You mm -hmm. said. So I'm going to put he this says, out. He says, ask of me. Ask of me. And you know, it wasn't about looks. It was mm -hmm. integrity issues. I had been through, you get 31, mm -hmm. you date enough guys as I had done. You realize, man, I'm looking for some solid The field stuff is here. not white unto harvest, is yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it changed. I wasn't willing to settle for just any Tom, Dick, and Harry anymore. Mm -hmm. I was looking for who God had for me that would help me fulfill what God had called both of us to do together. My it's focus changed. Yes, and if the right direction. If you just joined us, um, I'm talking to Carolyn Pankella. I'm going to put her website up, and uh, we're going to talk about this uh, brand new CD out, this very, very seasoned uh, musician. And if you don't have a computer, uh, contact me. I'll put you in touch with her because, uh, as you can tell, she would be great to speak for your ladies' groups, youth groups, whatever. She is experienced and she does have that testimony I talked about earlier. Uh, when um, Prince Charming did come along at the rightful age of 32, you start having children. Yeah, two years later. We got married and it was a whole miracle even that, because God had released me to start dating. You know, I had been through the season. I asked God, why are you punishing me? Because mm -hmm. he called me out for a year for no dating. He said, Carolyn, did you ask me to be used? Mm -hmm. I said, I did, God. He said, this is preparation. Mm -hmm. And I need you to come to me and let me fill you up. Let me be your strength. Let oh, me so be good. your source. So good. Let me be your self-esteem. Let me be your self-worth. Let me be your identity. Mm -hmm. And so I changed. So I was pulled out. Well, then he started releasing me. And my husband, we were out in Portland, Oregon. And I wish you had a picture to show him. He is absolutely so handsome. I mean, he is a dream to look at. My girlfriends always ask me, but more than that, he has a heart after God. And that was the number one thing on my list is I wanted a man wow. who had a heart after God because I knew if he had a heart after God, he wouldn't want to hurt God, so he wouldn't hurt me because God would get him. That makes sense. And it did, and so I met him. We were singing 20,000 people. A girlfriend bought him behind stage. We met, it was pitch black, couldn't tell you what he looked like, but I could feel the spirit of realness. Nine months later, we were married. And I'm telling you, it has been the greatest thing. We have two children now. I have a little six-year-old little boy who's precious and a two-year-old beautiful little girl. And we have a life together that is sold out to reaching people for Christ. Oh man, that, that has to be the desire of every serious Christian. I that hope. if it is the Lord's will for them to marry, that they'll have that. I, I think that um, when you have that kind of a relationship, you know, if you have a relationship with God, that's, that's wonderful. But there's a real bonus when you're married to somebody who's on the same wavelength as you spiritually. And you can talk about the things of God and you can pray together and all. And there are very few very, very few like that. And I feel for those women because mm -hmm. it is incredibly nice to have a husband who today, before I came here, grabbed my little girl and prayed with me that the Holy Spirit would speak through our words and wow. that would reach out. And that's his heart. He leads our home in that love and in that. And But for the women who are out there who, you know, they've got to live. They've got to do what Second Peter said. They've mm -hmm. got to live the life. Mm -hmm. 
that their husbands will want what they have. So That's they've got to get the exactly nagging right. under control and they can't be preaching it. They've got to be living out Jesus. I call mm -hmm. being Jesus with skin on them. Make That's your exactly husband right. want what you have. That's exactly right. Um, you, so you started the children thing uh, older than most. Mm -hmm. I would guess that you really appreciate those babies more maybe than an 18 year old who has them. You know, it's, it's got to be different. I mean, you've got some maturity on you. You've got you've got some spiritual maturity and understanding. I hope. I think the other thing is is losing my parents. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I get to continue with my children what I never got to have with my mom. Those moments of sitting and reading the book or talking about the Bible or you know, even now we color together a lot and I'm in their coloring books. I write messages to them of, I call them little nuggets of things that mama values, mm -hmm. integrity things that if something, God forbid, ever would happen to me, they get those little nuggets of what matter to me. Mm -hmm. It's not what's on and the so, outside, it's what's on the inside, so it's trusting God. So I think because of losing that, I value every day that we have mm -hmm. together. And yeah, it's a great cost, but we have a God who, who like, uh, you know, in the book of Job, he mm -hmm. just, he just so rewards. He's given yeah. you. Now, I want to touch on something else because uh, it wouldn't be real hard to do a five-hour interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back. But you lost, you lost a sibling, and I, I lost a sibling a few months ago, and then I lost a brother-in-law. And it's kind of like losing a chunk of yourself. I, I did lose a part of me because yeah. when our mom passed away and our dad, him and I were like... This brother. Oh, mm -hmm. we were so close. I mean, mm -hmm. where he went when I was at school, I remember being six and I, I would go to school and I would cry. And I would say, you got to get my brother, you got to get my brother. And I could see this 12-year-old boy, big oh, boy, man. come burrowing down the steps. And he would walk towards me and he'd put his arms around me and he'd pat me on the shoulders and he'd say, you got to get a hold of yourself. It's all going to be okay. That elder brother. That's, yeah, and I he, have he three of them. Jesus, yeah. I have three did of them. Did you have to watch him battle cancer? Yeah. That's rough. I did. And, you know, I have to tell you, for a while, it, I didn't believe it. I don't know if anybody's out there, you're numb, you don't believe it. You know, God, we've been through enough. I mean, I remember when he first called me, I dropped my phone. My husband thought somebody had passed then. And I yelled and screamed all the way to my sister's house, screaming, no, no, no. Yeah. And no doubt you prayed for healing all the way. Oh, believe it all the way. And I encourage people. Absolutely. You stand on God's word. God is still a healer. Mm -hmm. But there's no uh-ohs in heaven. Mm -hmm. God isn't up there saying, how did you show up here? You know, and uh, I have to trust. We believe God's word until God speaks. And God spoke and said it was his time. And then I had to deal with the guilt that I'm still here. You know, why God, you yeah. know, and, but God said, come on, you've still got work left to do. And mm -hmm. I know that my brother is up there saying, go, go, go tell them this is mm -hmm. the place they got to get to. You know, with you, I keep going back to the importance of the foundation that the parents put in children. You've had enough happen to you that you could be as bitter as a dill pickle. And, and you feel very justified in it. Because any time we're bitter, I think we feel just, totally justified. Well, and, and the Lord is saying, come up higher. The Lord is saying, come on, you know, I'm still in control. You gotta trust me. You have to trust me. And um, so you've, you've kept going. You do solo work. This is your newest, right? Yes, this is my first solo project, and it's in their family Christian Broken and bookstores. Beautiful. Broken into Beautiful. Or and it's out there now. In your Good. family Christian bookstores. They're, they've got it. It just mm -hmm. came out in January. Or they can go to carolynpinkhella.com and get it. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like my testimony, my story, is on this CD. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we wrote, I wrote with people, and then we listened to over 300 songs. It was very important to me because it's more than music. It's a message mm -hmm. that I want to get into people's hearts because we do have the choice of bitter or better. Mm -hmm. And I know where bitterness leads, the anger, the unforgiveness, 
It'll kill you. Yes, it will kill you. It's not going to kill yeah. anybody else. It's going to, it is uh, going to um, kill you. We have just a few minutes, but your family from a early times in their ministry did missionary work, right? Oh, yeah. And so you hear your mommy and your daddy up there in heaven saying, you got to keep it going. You got to keep it going. Uh, so you have interests in Africa yeah, we had, for children. Yes, we, and we've been doing work all over the world. This is just our newest project. We went to Zambia a year ago, and I felt the Lord calling and just got my life changed. I mean, obviously orphans and children mm -hmm. are very tender sure. to me because mm -hmm. of everything that we've been through. And there's over 500,000 children. They're expecting it to be over a million orphan children. And they call them double orphan because not only have they lost their mother and their father, they go to live with other siblings. And those people are pass passing away because of AIDS. And so we felt called and we are putting a rescue center together right mm -hmm. now um, that will be open hopefully in the spring. They've been having some floods, so it set us back. But for children who are literally found in trash cans, mm -hmm. found on the streets, found one little girl uh, was found in their home where the parent or the guy who was taking care of them had tried to burn them, scalded mm -hmm. to death, and left them there. This is a rescue center, and then we get them into a home, and then we do food, and we do Bibles, mm -hmm. and most importantly, we go over and minister and share Jesus. Yeah, uh, Homekeepers Ministry here has um, built, uh, helped to build halfway houses uh, for places in, uh, for, in Moldova and Romania where government orphanages put them out on the street when the day they're 16 years old. Wow. So we've joined with the ministry that builds homes so, because the pimps are waiting for them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. The sex traffickers are waiting. Uh -huh. And so we have this ministry where they go, they get an education, and uh, thank God for the wealth of America that we can do that and for the people uh, like yourself on the firing line. I think that's one reason that God hasn't dropped the sword on this country is because of the missionary work uh, that is being done because we've got a lot of sin in this nation. We've got a lot of people just thumbing their nose at God, but he also sees the good things. And you know what? We are out of time. And, but you're not that far away. You no. said you like to cook? Oh, love to cook. Okay, next time you're going to cook for us. Okay, I would okay. love to do that. Okay. Come share some of those old family recipes. All right. <laughs> and some new. <laughs> that sounds really good. And thank you for sharing your heart. Thank I you. know, I know that you have really ministered to a lot of people today. And you stay with me. We have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthlene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. What a refreshing lady. I hope she can come back soon. Um, and I do believe that no matter where you are in life, that somewhere within her testimony you could relate so glad to bring you people like that. I want to remind you again about the Busy People's Super Simple 30-Minute Menus. And this is such a great book. Right here it has all the, all the supplies you need. Over here on the right-hand side of the page, it has the supplies. It has the grocery list. It has the produce list so that it can guide you right through the grocery store. And the pantry list. And then it uh, tells you exactly how long it takes to uh, fix the meal. This one's a grilled teriyaki chicken sandwiches with homemade uh, creamy coleslaw and watermelon wedges. And I, anybody starting out to cook, they should have this. And anyone who's cooked all your life, it's going to save you a lot of time. So if you would like to have it, just call us at 1-800-229-0059. And uh, we'll take your credit card information there, or you can write to me. We love getting your notes and all that and appreciate so much anything you do to keep this ministry on the air. I have been thinking a lot recently as I see what's happening to our nation and how uh, Christians are kind of being put down, made fun of, you know, any opportunity 
in the media, it seems, and in entertainment. And so I wonder, what kind of Christian are you? What kind of Christian, man, Christian am I? Are you going to stand up for the Lord? Uh, Peter didn't, you know, before the crucifixion. In fact, the Bible says that uh, all of his disciples forsook him and fled. And it's going to get tougher in this nation, for sure. And as I mentioned to Carolyn, I wonder perhaps if God has been so merciful for a few reasons. I think one, we're kind to Israel, and he asked us to do that. We've sent a lot of missionaries out around the world to tell people about Jesus Christ. And we fed the world, and we've, we've sent them things they needed. I mean, America is right there with a great heart. But there are insidious forces in this nation right now. And godlessness on every hand it hadn't been too long ago that the governor of New York was removed from office because of um, prostitution, which happens to be illegal. And so then the guy who takes his place, uh, you know, he takes the oath of office and all that. And then he says, oh, by the way, my wife and I have both had affairs and he did drugs and everything. I think, what is this world coming to? And then I read something about an assistant librarian, I believe, in the state of California, who saw this guy in the library looking at porn, and she reported him. You know, that's against the law. But she did anyway. They followed up on it. She lost her job. But the police followed up on it and found that he had kitty porn on his computer at home, and he was arrested. She lost her job. And she said, first, I'm a mother. And, I, boy, I commend her, and I think there ought to be a strong, strong, strong movement to get her job back. But it made me think, first, let's be a Christian. And if you have to stand alone, stand completely alone. If you have to, it's no big deal. Let's have more people stand for Jesus instead of this wimpy factor in the church today. It's just a bunch of wusses sometimes. Stand up for what is right. He'll take care of all of it. What kind of Christian are you? Are you going to stand for him or are you going to slink away like Peter did? Think about it. And please join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.